Welcome to The High Bar, your weekly watering hole for lighthearted conversation with people who care about culture that matters. I'm Warren Etheridge, your host and barkeep. I promise never to cut anyone off and to encourage you all to think responsibly. Today, we will raise a toast and raise the bar for marriage equality. The California Supreme Court made history by ruling for equality in marriage. We're going to make history. What better day to get married than this historic day? As Deputy Marriage Commissioner, I now pronounce you partners in life. You may take. They're probably the greatest threat to America I know of. The church had contributions made through their members. This is how much you make. This is how much we think you can give, or you might lose your membership. Mormons believe that their prophet literally is in communication with God. There will be nothing that can defeat us. If God puts in the scriptures that it's a sin to live that lifestyle, then he's not going to have them born that way. Name on the homosexual community. We know the voice of the Lord. When he wants us to do something, we know how to do it. Gays interrupt the Mormon plan for heaven. They have gone ahead to stop same-sex marriages. I was disturbed by California becoming the first state to take rights away by changing its constitution. The Mormons make up 2% of California, but accounted for over 71% of their contributions. I find it just amazing, the church that's running as if they're a political action committee. They were the man standing behind the curtain that you're not supposed to look at. Do we have the same equal rights that you have? Yes, we can! Yes, we can! You're not just talking about the law. You're talking about people. Justice! This is about making a stand for what is right. This is simple. This is just love. Marriage equality seems to be the most divisive issue that nobody really should be that worked up about. And, and it's not even the uh, evangelical Christians that are that worked up, it's the Mormons. And today we're going to talk about marriage equality with the director of Eight, the Mormon Proposition, Stephen Greenstreet. Welcome, Stephen. Oh, thanks for having me. Now, you know, you're not just a filmmaker, you're also a recovering Mormon. Yes, to put it lightly, <laughs> I guess, yeah. What, what's, what's the problem? Why are we so worked up? About marriage equality? Yeah. Well, um, you know, the Mormon church overwhelmingly for decades now has had this really detailed uh, political campaign going state by state in the United States and around the world uh, trying to affect uh, gay rights, marriage rights. And uh, it's really a two-part uh, problem with them, one being a doctrinal one in that, um, and we had to de deal with this in the film, which was kind of touchy because uh, how do you deal with it without being... Uh, seeming disrespectful, in, I guess, in some senses, but they believe that uh, gays literally disrupt the eternal plan of heaven, that um, all men can be gods in the afterlife with their wives and create spirit children and then populate those pl uh, new planets, and, uh, and a gay child kind of pops up and disrupts that whole plan. And so for uh, doctrinal reasons, they, you know, they pound the pulpit and say that this, is, uh, uh, this will disturb the setting of the universe, essentially. Um, and so, you know, obviously for that reason, and then also for a, uh, when it, what it all boils down to, sim simplistically, is sex. Um, I mean, it's not a surprise that religions are very uh, strict, have very detailed and strict rules when it comes to sex, and that is specifically true for the Mormon church. And so when it, they officially preach uh, from the pulpit, it's okay if you're gay and you're in the audience, it's okay that you're gay, that's their stance now, just don't act on it. Just don't act like you're gay. <laughs> don't go with it, essentially. Just kind of like be gay and be quiet and, and that's it. So it's really a combination of, of those two things. So it's a don't ask, don't swish policy. <laughs> <laughs> Is that, that's what's going on? Exactly. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So let's go back to the doctrinal thing, because I, I, I got it in the movie, I, I understand. But does that mean like one gay child, one gay Mormon child actually screws up everything for everyone? Or just like it's a little unfortunate because that lineage is not going to not going to make it. 
yeah, the horrible thing is that you have these um, gay brothers and sisters sitting in the in in the congregation, hearing from the pulpit um, that just the fact that they're gay could possibly disrupt the entire family unit, their family unit forever, forever, ever. And because Mormons believe that after this life, after you die, you can you're set with your family forever which you know, on the surface is, is, is beautiful, but when you dig underneath of it a little bit, they're literally telling these gay kids, if you continue to be gay and you're not fixed, in the afterlife you will no longer see your mom, you will no longer see your, your dad, your brothers and sisters. That and, is heaven to me personally, but that's another <laughs> story. <laughs> and and these, these kids deal with that from a young age, and it's, it sinks into their hearts that uh, not only am I being told that I'm sinning, but I'm being told that I'm going to lose my entire family. And for many of them, it's, it's more than they can take. Right. So this is the ultimate spiritual piss in the pool because you are ruining it for everybody. Right in there. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and essentially, I mean, piss in the pool is essentially, I think a good summation of it, mm -hmm. um, as trite as it is, because that's essentially how some of these people are treated. Fitting but trite, that's really what yeah. I go for. That's, yeah. a, that's a blurb for this show, the high bar actually. <laughs> So let's go to the next part. You know, what really amazes me is I, I'm very accustomed to uh, the words religion and hypocrisy going hand in hand. But one of the things I love is that if it were Christians or just about anybody else, this whole thing about like marriages between a man and a woman, I, I'd sort of get it. But these people are sort of on the forefront of the alternative marriage movement as well. I mean, polygamy, <laughs> last time I checked, is not really widely embraced by people. And you think maybe you want to take a back seat on this one. Yeah, you know, the, the Mormon church practiced polygamy right from its founding uh, back in the in mid 1800s and they were persecuted, killed, raped, their cities burned down and they were chased across this country. That's how Utah got founded as a state because they ended up in Utah after being chased and persecuted so horribly. And then, you know, years later they they are the ones in turn kind of persecuting another version of alternative marriage of the same people saying no, you know, we love each other, accept us and they're the ones kind of chasing people from town to town, you know, which is Defer definitely hypocritical. Not only that, but as we show in the film, one of the descendants of those pl uh, polygamous Mormons who were persecuted is the main character in our film, right. who is uh, Tyler, uh, Tyler Barrick, who um, got married to Spencer Jones on the first day gays were allowed to in San Francisco on June 17th. And so, like, there's an initial immediate tie in there, and uh, I hope more people see that. And his great great grandfather was Frederick. Granger Williams, Williams, right, who right. fled to Mexico. Right, was right? Fl fled all the way to Mexico, that's right. To protect his marriage rights. Yeah, to protect, he, had, he had three wives <laughs> so, and children, yeah. And so now because the Mormons are acting out, uh, you know, with Prop 8 and stuff like that, uh, essentially uh, his great-great-grandson is going to ruin his uh, time in heaven, isn't he? I, I guess, I mean, like... <laughs> Are you asking me? There, there's no, well, I, no, I think there's some glorious sort of payback in that, isn't there? <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, they're, they're <laughs> I guess so. And, and, like, I would like to think that Frederick Granger and Tyler have a lot in common. Right. And if they were, he was alive today, they could kind of, like, be like, oh, man, it sucks being persecuted, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's not good. Nobody likes persecution too much. No. And, and, and you know, as is, is, is horrible as is, is it really is, uh, you know, obviously buildings are being... Um, burned, people aren't being killed in mass anymore, but the the human element of, of, of civil rights and persecution and being told that you're a second class citizen resonates still as it did back in back in the times of the 1840s and the the heartbreak uh, exists on on equal levels and that's you know that's universal human experience but now you were a Mormon you went on a Mormon mission. You I were did. a missionary. Wow. You were out there. You were selling the word. I was. And uh, you, you bought in. You were there. You know, you know, I grew up, that was, uh, I went to Venezuela as a Mormon missionary for two years uh, in 1998. And, um, you know, grew up in the church. And the church is a very saturated cultural experience. It's a 24-7, seven, seven days a week religion. It's not just go to church on Sunday or on Easter type religion. Uh, your whole entire life, your friends, your, your, the way you spend in money, where you choose to work and live, all of that is centered around your religion. And so growing up in the church, I, I always refer to myself as more a cultural Mormon. And so when I went, I went because, you know, my brother had gone and, and, and such. And, um, and I didn't really mind the message. In a lot of ways, more missionaries go and they knock on doors and the first couple of lessons are about charity and compassion and love and acceptance and all of these great um, these ethics in, in, from the New Testament. And I was kind of shocked 
you know, 10 years later to look in California in the same church going in and knocking, literally knocking on the door of City Hall and with a complete void of those ethics. And I was like, wait a minute, you know, is this the same church? And what, what went wrong? Because most religions start with that. They start with the compassion, love, it's about nice, be Christ-like, something, mm -hmm. let's get out there, be tolerant. Yeah. And you, you were selling people on that. Yeah, yeah, you know, um, I mean, selling people on the basics. And, you know, it, t to be honest, if it works for you, and, like, that's, we say this in the film, you know, I'm all for preach for, and let preach and teach and let teach. If it works for you and it makes you happy, then that's great. And, like, I saw in my mission people who some of the basic messages helped kind of formulate a structure to their life, and, and they improved, and I thought that that was a very positive Thing. Obviously, with any religion, I honestly believe with any religion, once you begin to really dig into like what you really, really, really are supposed to believe in, you're just like, wow, <laughs> you know, whoa, really? Um, and so I felt the same. I eventually got to that point uh, with the Mormon religion. And I also had a lot of uh, different evolutions when it comes to my, my own personal um, beliefs. And so I thus left the church um, years and years ago. So, so what was that point? I mean, I like the fact that you call yourself a cultural Mormon. I'd call myself a cultural Jew, yes. and I think I've got one up on you on that one. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's a far better way to go culturally. <laughs> People aren't drinking. You're not having enough fun. Yeah. But uh, well, what, what changed your mind? Um, I started thinking. <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, That's always a bad one. In all, ser in all seriousness, I, I, I did, I, I'm a very analytical person. I like to always ask questions. You know, I'm a filmmaker, and so I'm always asking questions, documentary, and always interviewing. And so when it comes to my own life, I'm always asking questions. And uh, I just, uh, the whole idea, I would refer to myself as an atheist now. Mm -hmm. um, and I, uh, but I remember the linchpin, the catalyst was in 2003 when we went into Iraq. And... Uh, my vision of Jesus had always been of this pacifist, and, and uh, I went to church meeting after church meeting where they were like pounding the war drum from the pulpit and teaching lessons about Jesus with a sword and vengeance, and I was like, where the hell am I, you know? It's and, like an episode of South Park. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, completely like a South Park episode, and, and I was just like, I can't, I, I don't want my name on my government going to Iraq, much less, you know, my church, and so I just, you know, stopped going. Do you work for the State Department now? You know, I, I do <laughs> work for the State Department, but um, as, a, as a video journalist covering, you know, international topics that are important to youth demographics around the world, such as, like, climate change, and um, as a using my skills as a documentarian to kind of engage conversations on those important topics, which I've enjoyed. Okay, we'll let you off the hook for that one. Yeah. So let's talk about Prop 8 down okay. in California. So mm -hmm. briefly, there, were, there was marriage equality, briefly. <laughs> Ever so briefly. Yeah, so the, the ban against same-sex marriage was lifted um, in 2008, um, late spring 2008, and then on June 17th was the first day that gays could um, go get married. And uh, for three months, 18,000 couples got married. Um, I mean, lines around the blocks. So it was just this kind of like celebratory, amazing moment. And then almost instantly from day one, the, the political and religious powers uh, dumped, ra quickly raised $2 million and got the signatures necessary to put Prop 8 on the ballot for November. I mean, they really had to rush for this. And, um, and yeah, so for a small window, our, our two main characters, Tyler and Spencer, were married on the first day. And those 18,000 marriages to this day are still valid uh, in California. There are still, um, there's still a campaign to kind of get those even nullified. But um, yeah, for, for a brief window in time, we saw what I hope to be the future. Oh, so George Takai is still married. He's still yeah. good. He's, he's in the clear.